good day and welcome back so today we're gonna talk about serialization with Jason okay so let's try and understand the problem why we might need serialization let's say I have a list of some data that I want to send to a friend for them to use on their computer so I'm on computer A and I have maybe um, somebody typed in a list of users and some other things and I want to get it to another computer. How do I get those values that I have in my computer memory to the other computer so that they are represented the same way? And so serialization deals with this problem. It's how do you represent values in a computer so it can be easily be used for interchange or between communication, um, move from one computer to another computer, or even store it, right? Something you might need to, you can imagine that if you have something in memory and you serialize it out to disk, and instead of just move to another computer, I turn off my computer and I start it up, I want it to reread those values and show me the exact same thing. So that's all I have to do with serialization, whether you want to move it somewhere else or you just want to have it in that computer um, stored in outside of memory so that you can return to where exactly where you are. And so, Serialization then is the method or mechanism and standard that you use for converting values in a computer memory to some format that can read back, you can read back in or use for interchange. And so let's look at JSON here, for example. Okay, um, so the, this is, uh, so if you go to www.json.org, you will find the specification um, for the JSON notation, which JSON really means JavaScript object notation, right? So um, if you look, you'll see um, that, and this is when I, um, in, when we talk about expression, I mentioned that if you want to go look up the BNF um, notation for how you um, specify like expression, that sort of thing, or a syntax for a language, this is an example of it. So here you can see it says um, a JSON object is this thing called an object? And an object is open and close parentheses, which is an empty object, or open close parentheses with some member. Okay, a mem members inside. Now, what is a, what are members? Members is just a pair, or a pair followed by more members. So you can see the circular definition. If you apply what a member is, you expand back to a pair followed by more members, or just a pair, right? And then what is a pair? Is a string and a value separated by a colon. Okay, important that this be a string. And Anyway, um, you can figure out the rest of it just by looking through it, but I don't want to spend time going walking you through this. I think you can kind of get it. The important thing, I think, is um, to look at examples. I think the more examples you look at, if this, you're new to serialization and JSON, then that's going to be more beneficial. So I have several examples for us to look at, and some simple serialization, some nested Java object serialization, and then we're going to look at deserialization because their serialization is the opposite of serialization. So if serialization is taking, you know, something in uh, memory and then find a representation that you can put on disk or walk over to another computer or send over the wire to another computer or however you're going to get it to another computer over some channel, then deserialization is, okay, now I have it in a serialized format. How do I get it back into the representation of um, some Java object that I can manipulate in code? And so we're going to see that. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, it's best for understanding JSON and serializing is just like look at a ton of examples. So let's start off here, um, very simple. And so I have a variable and number, and of course, norm in it, and one with a name and date. And so far, we've covered all these types of data types already. Um, and so I have an empty array, and then I have an array with um, some elements in it, you know, using those previous variables. Then I have an object here, and again, reusing some of those variables. Notice that the key for my objects are the variable names, okay? So number, name, date, AR. Now, as you know, uh, when you do a key for object in JavaScript, you can either put it in, uh, just type it like this, and JavaScript knows what it is, or if it, for some reason, contains some string symbol or something, you can enclose it as a string, because pretty much anything can be a key um, in JavaScript, right, including like even a function reference. But anyway, we keep it simple like this, right? I just wanted to um, mention that. Um, all right, and so uh, let's um, now look at what happened when I call this 
stringified method on the JSON object. I don't have to write the JSON object that's provided to me by JavaScript. And so um, your browser have an implementation of it and so does Node. And so when I call JSON that's stringified and I give it a number, um, we will see what it returns. And here you can see it just returns a number, right? Nothing fancy. Um, I'm just telling JSON at that point to give me the representation of this number in JSON and it's just a number. Um, same thing when, when I say give me representation of this string name, even though I use single quotes here, notice it doesn't matter. In J JavaScript, that's just a string and JSON say, oh, there's a string I know to return that and that it put double quotes. Uh, when I say the same thing for date, notice the difference though. JavaScript, when it calls, um, you know, try to print out the date, it tries to give me a nice representation to match my locale and it prints it out this way. But when JSON gets it and try to turn that Java object into a uh, JSON string, it prints it out this way. So it's a string, but notice how it's kind of encoded, so I've reformatted. And so it is in this way that now, as a string, I can send it uh, to another computer. Another computer is going to deserialize it, you know, turn it back into a date. And then when I tell JSON to, uh, you know, serialize an empty array, just give me back square bracket empty array. Of course, when I tell it to serialize an array with elements, we expect the same thing, which is the numbers to look like numbers, uh, the string to look like strings, and so on. Now, this is me printing out the array as, it, as JavaScript sees it, and there is me printing out the array as JSON sees it, which the number comes out as a number, string comes out with a double quote, and the time comes out in that way that we saw here, and then there's the empty array. So again, nothing, it's just to sort of putting these things together, um, nothing too strange there. Things get a little bit interesting though, when we ask JSON to serialize um, or make a serializable string for a JavaScript object, which is box here. And we could see that though, when Java prints it out, it says, well, box is this open print, open curly braces, a number, that's the key, yep, that's fine and um, name is a key and blah, 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 and here's a string. And of course there's date and it prints out date like, you know, some sensible way for match my locale. But when I ask JSON to turn this into a JSON string for that serialized, notice uh, what it does. It takes this field number, the key, and it encodes it in double quotes. And then of course it leaves the number the same way which we would expect, it doesn't do anything fancy to it. Again, all the keys get turned into strings, enclosing strings, all the keys. Right, and then the string, um, varl, you know, it gets nicely double quoted, and date, of course, what happened before and thing. So this is so why they said this is interesting is because you could see the difference of how JSON is treating an object here, and how it, when it serializes it, it enclosed those keys in double quotes, and so that when it gets to the other side, there's no question as to what is the key and what is not, okay? All right, so you can, you know, certainly pull up node and run this, right? So you could see I run example two previously, but there you go, and you get the exact same thing I pasted here for those who don't want to run it, whatever. All right, so let's go to a slightly more ex complex example. And here I'm gonna try and serialize a nested object. So before I had this basically the same box object with you know name five yada yada, and so on, and um, but I added another um, key and um, you know a value that's an object. So, so now we have this nested object, right? And so this nested object has you know foo and bar and list. And now, when we check and see what type is box, of course it's an object. And then when we take, check what type um, the JSON string is, it is a string, which you expect a string, because when JSON serializes something, it turns it into a string so that um, you know we can send it from one computer to another computer just simply as a string. And then, um, we print out that JSON string and there's what it looks like, right? We expect up to here, but then here 
you know, same thing. This few things it's got in quotes, and then colon. Um, again, we have we have an object, so it encloses it in curly braces, and then repeats the whole process it had before. So it just just repeats the exact same thing. So that shouldn't be too hard to understand. I hope. Okay. Um, so now we understand, hopefully, <laughs> serialization in that. Once you, I have this now, this JSON string here, I can just copy this, save it to a file or something, and send it off to another computer. Now, the other thing I can do is, this is very long and ugly, is I can go to the website and um, do something. Um, this is a site we have set up before the JSON um, specification, but I can go look on Google for a JSON formatter online, and then click here. And then I type it in. There are any number of them. So if you don't find that exact one, don't worry. Just use one that came, came up in your search. And I'll say process. And it's going to think about it for a little bit. And then it's telling me that, oh, this is valid JSON. And then it spits it out in a nicely formatted um, way, which is much nicer than my computer had it. Okay? So now if this is really good, you, you want to sometimes... When you generate a JSON object in code, you might want to validate it. So that's why these online tools are valuable. Another thing is sometimes somebody is sending you a JSON object or you get one and you want a nice readable format so you can paste it in this thing and see it nicely, okay? Um, if it's really long, um, these things allow you to kind of navigate it. Now, there are a number of other tools, but I'm not going to get into those. Um, you even have stuff, stuff on your computer. They can help you format it, but again, let's just stick to online. All right, so now we know how to look at it. Uh, we see how nested JSON object get uh, serialized the same way. The process just repeat. We even see how to pretty print it, or at least get a pretty example of it. Uh, now let's talk about deserializing. So now we know you can get a JSON object, you'd send it to another computer, put it on a disk, walk it over to another computer, write it on a piece of paper, send it an email, whatever you want, or snail mail, um, send it over the network to a computer. Um, and this becomes important because uh, let's think of your browser. When you log into your Gmail, if you have Gmail or some online mail account, which most people have these days, um, how do you think they get the information that's uh, from you, like when you compose a mail, back to the server to send it off, or even when you try to pull up your list of email. They have to save that as in computer memory, first they read out the hard drive, they put it in a format, which is, you know, once they read out the hard drive, they, they now have it in memory, and they have to serialize it in some way and send it to you. And so they send it over the wire, you know, the network, and it comes to your computer, your computer deserializes it, and now presents it to you. And one of the most popular ways of doing that is actually for the web, is this JSON format. There are other formats for deserializing things and sharing exchange of information. There's XML, uh, which we were supposed to talk about when we were doing um, HTML, but I, we didn't have, well, I didn't do it. Uh, but, so XML is another format. They're, they're binary formats. So there are tons of formats out there for s dictating or specifying that if you want to move information from one computer to another computer, how you do it. And the advantage of JSON, it's human readable. Um, it's not too verbose, all right? Um, those are two advantages. But if you wanted to exchange a whole lot of data, yeah, then JSON actually seemed kind of wasteful because you have all these curly thing and quotes and all this stuff that keep repeating. And so there are binary formats that would uh, make sending the same amount of information you would send with JSON take up less space, except that those are not quite human readable. You have to spend some time running through some kind of program that would, you know, parse it and, and spit it out in a human readable fashion. So there are pros and cons either way, but for the web, people have pretty much for now at least settled on using JSON as the interchange format between computers and your browsers and the servers and so on. All right, so that's all I'm gonna say on, on that one for now. So now that we understand that you can do that, what about deserializing? Well, let's think about, let's take date. And so if I take a date and I turn it to JSON, serialize it, I end up with something that looks, you know, strange, like uh, basically this sort of thing, which we talked about before. And now I'm a construct, a JSON string. Now, I didn't get it from anywhere, but you can imagine that somebody gave me this on a piece of paper or an email, and now I wrote it 
down here, right? So I know a JSON up, um, string should start with open parentheses and then the keys are in quotes. So this is a key I have called going. And then the value here is true and comma and then I have another key here called or property called count and the value is 20 as an integer. And then I have a date and then I enclose the date value that was serialized example of a date value, I've enclosed it here in a string. Now, what I want to demonstrate is I can take this JSON string that I've constructed, this JSON string that I've constructed, and I'll show that it's a string, I print out what it looks like, and then uh, of course type of, and that should print out that it is a string, which it is. And then um, I'm going to parse it. So this is how you deserialize. So stringify is when you take an object, JavaScript object, or a value, and you turn it into a string, into a string, JSON string. And then parse is when you take a JSON string, or a string that matches the JSON format and specification, and you say turn it into a JavaScript object. And so now when this saves this into object, I, ex I should expect from my JSON string here, I get a JavaScript object. And when I do type of object, sure enough, it tells me it's an object, okay? And so you take the string and turn it into an object. Now, what does that mean to have an object? It means that if I were to print it out, you know, look at that. That's what it comes out as. You see the double quotes are gone because JavaScript doesn't really show the double quotes. It just show that the, this is the key and that's the value true, the Boolean. And count is a number. And then here's date. It left it as a string. Long, well, I don't know if there's a long, but yeah, JSON doesn't deserialize your date back to a date object. But we, we can get around that. And so it still leaves as a string, but then, and here you can see that the type of that going property is Boolean, the type of count is number, which is what we accept and what we put in um, here. I put in a Boolean. And now for date, we can get back to that nice representation by simply saying, I want you to create a new date using the stringified serialized version of the date string that I had. And now I get this out of representation, which turns this into the same thing, which we could see here, April 12th, you know, um, time was, you know, um, 243 or whatever. Um, so taking into account the time zone, then yeah, you know, so here, it says two, but then when uh, you know I printed out, it says time um, ten. That's because you know it is taken into account which time zone and the time zone and in and all this sort of stuff. So it adjusted, right? So this the GMT time, and if you don't understand any of that, don't any of that sort of stuff. Don't worry about it, right? You don't need to know that. Bottom line is, I was able to serialize the date, and then. It prints it out in a time that's appropriate from my, where I'm located. If I was in California, it would print it out again accordingly. Um, adjusted the time and wherever you are, if I know I have some international viewers, when you do the same example, it's gonna print out a time that's appropriate for your um, location. All right, so that's deserialization. So let's let's wrap up. Let's kind of conclude this this very long video. So what we learned today is um, you can use serialization and by extension deserialization to be able to you know save stuff that's in memory and either put it in a format that you can later retrieve or send it to another computer and have that um, same value be represented there in memory. And so this is really important because without it, you're not going to be able to get all your wonderful mail from the mail server that's not on your computer or be able to compose a mail on your computer and then be able to send it to that mail server to be able to send it to your friend or whatever. So this is used all the time um, from the dawn of computer realize that, you know, we need to be able to stuff that in memory, represent it in some form that we can put it on disk. And then once you have done disk or some, and then there are different representation, I'm not gonna get into it, that you might use for storing things on disk or if you wanna show it over the wire, but just think that once you deserialize, once you serialize something, you pretty much have it in a representation you can use for it interchange, okay? Or exchange, however you want to see it. Um, I hope again that you're able to learn something and ask questions if you something is amiss or I went over something too quickly or I didn't explain it well. And we're 
not quite at the end of JavaScript yet. I think there's some miscellaneous things I like to cover that I left out when we were covering like functions and all these other things that maybe I'll go back and wrap up in one really large video, probably. One large video, probably, or several videos, depending on if it's looking too long. And that way, it gives you opportunity to say, we can skip it. I don't think it's necessarily required, but be, be kind of good to know those things before we jump into looking at um, the application frameworks we can use to write writing web applications. So hang in there. We're pretty much at the end of JavaScript. I think we're probably 99 point something percent through the material I want to cover for JavaScript, not through JavaScript itself. You can always be learning more JavaScript. I don't know everything about JavaScript, so I can't tell you that we're 99 percent through JavaScript, just 99 percent um, through the things I want to cover for JavaScript. And so um, let me end this here before this goes on for too long. All right. Thanks for your time. Take care and see you in the next video.